All right. Well, welcome to Ward Wrestling Live. Good morning. Uh, we're here with, uh, I don't know if I've ever been more nervous, but I've got the, uh, the head coach of the Ohio State Wrestling Program, uh, legendary Tom Ryan with me. Uh, a little bit about him as a wrestler, uh, two-time NCAA All-American at Iowa. Uh, he was part of Iowa's 91-92 National Championship team. Uh, he was a two-time Big Ten champ uh, under the great Dan Gable. As a coach, uh, he's done quite a bit, but some of the things that I wrote down, uh, he's got a coaching dual record of 281, 39 and one. He was the 15, 2015 national champ with Ohio State team championships, two-time NCAA coach of the year. He's coached six Buckeyes to 12 national championships, seven-time conference coach of the year at Hofstra, two-time New York State coach of the year, six-time conference champ at Hofstra, uh, and, Cherry on top, he was the assistant coach at IU. And listen, there's there's four more pages where that came from, but I would spend the first 30 minutes talking about his accolades and not talking to him. So welcome to the great Ohio State coach, uh, Tom Ryan. Thanks so much for coming on, sir. Yeah, appreciate uh, spending time with you. I know you've been busy. Lots of lots of, lots of great uh, podcasts. Yeah, you know, it's, it's been Amazing. a blessing and uh, it's definitely exceeded my expectations. And uh, I, I, yeah, I, somebody messaged me yesterday that I was having you on and I was telling you just, um, you know, Miss Palazzo and, and she just spoke so highly about you and your character and, and your background and coach and Mike. And, and I, I only messaged her back. I go, I, I can't believe he said yes. I'm like a big kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Mike's obviously doing a great job down there at, at Highland Prep, and he obviously, as, as, as you know, he wrestled for me at Indiana University when I was an assistant there. He had the biggest biceps and the biggest pecs of any wrestler I think I've ever coached, although Bo Jordan is pretty close, so <laughs> yeah. Mike, was, Mike was a strong guy. I think he's still working on those. Yeah, he probably is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, man, again, honor to have you on, sir. You know, before we get into some of these questions here, I know it's definitely been a uh, a different type of off season for everybody, right? Um, you know, what what kind of things ha have you had to do to just maybe keep your keep your guys ready, keep your guys' minds right, and, and prepared for uh, if or when this season goes forward? Yeah, so I mean, I think the biggest thing for anybody uh, in a leadership role. Uh, which we're all in, whether we're leading our family or leading a business, a community, a wrestling team, uh, is, to, is the first thing I needed to do was make sure that I stayed right, right? So it all starts within the individual. So for me, uh, you know, it's finding ways to pick up burdens that are challenging for me because burdens that are good, right? We all pick up burdens along the way. We'll call them burdens, right? Passions, loves. So when wrestling was, was, was you know, really taken, uh, due to a, right, a, a microscopic bug, right, on March 11th, it's okay, now what do I do that uh, excites me uh, to get up in the morning, right? What, how am I going to make an impact? And uh, so that, that was the first thing for me, was making sure that my habits stay strong, right? It all starts with me uh, as an individual, each of my coaches. I've done a lot of yard work, to be honest, man. I moved, <laughs> changed houses, we downsized. And then, of course, you know, just just uh, staying in touch with the team and making sure that each person, right? If you want to be a part of a better organization, you got to be a better you. So uh, it's just that focus on each one of these guys. And we, uh, you know, passionate people like the ones that I get to coach, they find ways to train. They solve problems, right? When when I say the wrestling room is shut down because of COVID, uh, a someone that deeply loves the sport. Is going, is going to take the initiative to find ways to improve. So I like where my team is, despite the fact, uh, Dan, that I have not I had not seen them for six months. Really? Six months, yeah, March 11. I was out of the room, no training, not allowed around the team from March 11 to September 11. So September 11 was the first time I was allowed back with the team. Wow. And, uh, now we did a lot of Zooms and a lot of leadership stuff and a lot of making sure that people are right mentally and emotionally, right? That was the biggest concern is that, you know, their life is built around so many, you know, this, this lofty goal that they throw on their backs and all the struggles that make sense to them as they chase it. And then when, when that's lifted off your back, 
Now what's got you under duress, a good, healthy duress? So, so that's been the biggest challenge, I would say, overall. And this team has done a really good job. So I'm excited about them. Yeah, and you've seen um... – no, I've seen some virtual stuff where your guys are getting together wherever they're finding a place to get together and keeping themselves in shape and uh, getting over to the local gyms or whatever that are open for them and, and really being able to do their thing. And I, uh, I, I sure hope that, uh, that we see Ohio State on the mat this year. Uh, definitely, I was talking to Glenn Lanham, the, the Duke coach, the other day, and um, you know, he's pushing for all all wrestling to happen just like everyone else is. And he talked a little bit about his purpose. And, um, you know, I think with wrestling, a lot of people have that misconception that it's dangerous, but you, it's the most con controllable sport. You can control who you're with every day, who you're touching with every day, who you're around every day. So I think it can be a lot safer than what people think it is. But um, I, I agree with you. Yeah. We're, we're put in a high risk. We're put in a high risk, but you know, the reality is that if you're if you're if you're organized with your practices, then you conceivably could only come in contact with one person a week or every two weeks. And that's challenging to do in many other sports. So uh, we have our challenges, but but certainly agree with you on that. And yeah, I love Glenn Lanham, by the way. Glenn's a great man. He just he just he grabbed one of my favorites, Dan. He grabbed old Nathan Tomasello. <laughs> He's now on his staff as an assistant coach. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I asked about adding uh, adding NATO, and uh, uh, just he says just having his character in the room and, and him as a person is amazing. And because he wants to give back so much, uh, and uh, it's very hard for him to decide. You know, it's very hard for him to to be able to go train for that me kind of concept when he's nothing about me he's always about everyone else and it's been it's yeah. been for him to to find that line in between he says so i could see that yeah and dan i told you earlier my favorite logo on your wall is just to the right of your hat from a viewer's standpoint just to the right of your left shoulder that's the my ohio logo. state logo oh yeah i see that one yeah i see it i see it up there all right we'll have oh, to make yeah. it bigger for you coach that'd be nice all right. Hey, so, uh, you know, first of all, your program, uh, you've been there now for many, many years. Uh, uh, you've built, uh, you know, talk about your culture, philosophy, and, and, and building that winning program. What, uh, you know, what it, what it takes to be at the top year in and year out at a program like that. Yeah, so obviously culture, you know, I think culture is a buzzword, right? in the society that we live in now and, and how critically important it is to build culture. And I believe that culture, I said this earlier, uh, it's a pillar of success, I believe. And that's simply that, you know, culture is made up of, of individuals that really know who they are and what they want. So what we do, what we do, you know, ironically, I think people in Ohio State Wrestling, listen, we certainly put people through immense amount of duress, right? Physical duress, right? That's, that's just, that just goes along with the territory. If you're not willing, if an individual is not willing to come to terms with the amount of work, intense physical work that goes into being elite in wrestling, well, you're at an ex extreme disadvantage off the start. But what we do on top of that, because that's a non-negotiable, right? You've got to understand that pain is good and you've got to make pain your friend, right? When pain becomes your friend, life gets just easier in all things. We usually grow when we're under duress. But what we do when these guys come in to build our culture is we start working on them as individuals. And we teach them three things that are really critical, but that schools don't teach, right? And sometimes because of the craziness of households, uh, we, we don't learn these things as young people. Um, and the first thing is that we teach them how to listen. That's not easy, right? No, that, that's a work, not. right? <laughs> it's a work, and, right? So it's a, work in, it's a work in progress for all of us. I mean, anybody that's married knows that uh, listening is really important. Uh, so listening, we teach them how to listen. We teach them how to write, how to write exactly what it is they're thinking, right? To get their thoughts down on paper. And then we teach them how to speak clearly and concisely. Um, and those three things really help them one. And most importantly, know who they are, why they're here, right? What, what they value, what their beliefs are what their non-negotiables are. But then just as important, because somebody can know that and be an arrogant fool and a disruptor 
in an organization. And every one of us at some point in time will, will work alongside somebody who's a disruptor. And we find it disruptive and not amusing at all, right? So, so, so what we do is we work hard on building a culture where we love each other, we love ourselves, but we love each other. And, and assimilating into a group is not easy, right? You can, you can have, you can have a, 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 a group of great individuals, but the culture uh, can, can, can struggle because they don't know how to assimilate. Right and and be part be, and be part of a team and be part of a group, and those are the first things that we do uh, with Ohio State wrestling. And and I think um, so that's that's great. I had I had a, I had a question down the road here, but I think this is a perfect time to to kind of put it in there. I think that's one of the big reasons why community service is a big part of your program is to get not only obviously you want to teach them how to give back to the community and be involved in the community and. And it's pretty cool when you see a wrestler in your front yard cutting your grass or whatever. But, but also that's part of the camaraderie, right? Teaching them team. Sure. And, and, and I think, you know, one of the things that's just so critically important for us as humans is connection. <clears throat> like connection is so important. You know, I know the SEALs, you know, we, we look at some of the SEAL stuff and they call each other SEAL buddies and going dark, right? When someone, when someone is carrying a burden, that they're not willing to share with others and you go dark, it's just unhealthy for us as a human being. So community service, you know, it allows my guys to get out, meet people, learn about other people and how powerful it is in just asking someone, hey, how you doing? Tell me what you're, like you're doing. Tell me what your childhood was like. Tell me about your mom and dad. You know, tell me the the most difficult thing you've gone through. And we work, uh, you know, we work, whether it's hospitals, uh, with, with children that are sick, or our guys will go and read to young people. Uh, we work with FCA. So there's a lot of different things our guys do, but the biggest thing is just connecting with others. And that's powerful. And we believe in it. It's a pillar. And, and experience, experiencing that together makes a difference. Then Absolutely. Uh, so <clears throat> take a break here. We've got um, uh, Coach Charlie Morgan down in Florida, he put up the OH, gave you a big OH there. And then uh, Bud Hennenball says, Coach Ryan is the best. One of my all-time favorite. Glad I can see, glad I could get on and see him today. Uh, Bill Crum, Coach Ryan is not only one of the classiest people I've gotten to know in wrestling, but in all of the sports and life in general. Uh, Coach Richard Jensen, thank you, Coach Ryan, for being a positive role model and leader for our young athletes. For so many years. See you in November. Uh, Steve Hall, can't wait to see women's wrestling in the Big Ten one day. Uh, Chuck Morris, what's going on, Tom? Uh, Bob, Bob Hewitt. I know all these guys, all, all great. Guys. All, all, it's amazing how many people's, how many people that you, you cross paths with in this amazing sport. You know, my That's wife and I, my family, you know, Dan, we went, I know you said this earlier, but we went out to Colorado a couple times as a family. And every night we stayed with a different friend, whether it was the Krebses or Dom Gorey, you know, the, the three-time commander of the space shuttle who's a wrestler. It's just amazing how once you've wrestled, you're in a community that is unbreakable. And I love that about wrestling. You know, there's it's, a bond built. It's insane. I mean, all these people are, are coming on. Uh, Bob Camp, regardless of the level from junior high to NCAA D1, administrative support is critical. How and what does Tom do with administration to gain or continue support for the wrestling program? Yeah, that's a great question. So most importantly, uh, you know, I share my vision. I have an annual report that goes to the department sharing our vision, uh, you know, our, our areas of need. Um, I make sure that the connection is good, that, that the communication is strong. Uh, and you bring in people, you know, fundraising is really important. Friend raising is important. So, you know, I not only look at, you know, the things that I hold great value in, and that's, of course, I like having Big Ten and national champions. I like <laughs> putting guys in the world team. But I also try to, you know, sit in their seat and what are the things that they value uh, and how can I make sure that my relationship with them, with them stays really strong? Because ultimately, as you're, as you're I think you know, the question is a great question and it's for a reason. It's very hard to climb any higher than the person above you wants to climb, Right. And if you can build a strong relationship with them and get them to know you and you know them, their likelihood of being in your corner when you need them is far greater. So 
Uh, you know, obviously, I've been really fortunate to work under an athletic director like Gene Smith, who loves wrestling. My immediate supervisor is TJ Shelton. We speak often. And, uh, you know, we're just in a really good place. That's awesome. All right, Steve Hall, that's a good man teaching good humans how to be better. We're lucky to have him in our sport. And uh, Nick Corey asked Tom who his favorite guitarist or performer is <laughs> all time. If he doesn't mention me, I'm done with him. <laughs> that's really funny. I got a bunch, man. I got too many to name, but, yeah, uh, Nick, but Nick, Corey, Nick, Nick Corey, <laughs> Nick Corey, he's got to be in the top thousand. No question about it. <laughs> top thousand. But All right, so uh, Gary you know, Taylor too. I don't want to sleep on Gary Taylor. He's a wrestling coach down at Ryder for many years. He provided inspiration for me because his team was beating mine when I got the Hofstra. And he can play and sing a tune, but so can Nick Corey. Nick's good. All right, he but mentioned David. You, Nick. Yeah, David Gray. I like David Gray. David Gray is one of my guys. Van Morrison. <laughs> he put in all seriousness. Uh, yeah. Coach is the best. Um, so, so back to the Buckeyes. Who's a, uh, who's a Buckeye this year that we should keep our eye on? Well, I, you know, I'm excited about this team, really excited about this team. And, you know, this is, this is a year like no other year. I mean, world wars have been canceled uh, seasons, right? And COVID did, right? So this is, we're in uncharted territory from the standpoint of, um, of people have having something taken from them that was so dear to them that now you know maybe, maybe we're going to see who got that perspective of you know maybe I took wrestling for granted a little bit maybe the style I wrestled maybe the amount of fight I had will be increased uh, because I won't take this for granted this thing that I love so much I'm also looking uh, forward to seeing really who was the best CEO of their life this summer, right? Who's the guy that, despite the fact that I didn't, there wasn't mandatory practice that ran his life in a very constructive way. All of this is gonna be revealed at the national tournament in March and certainly sooner than that. So, and, and this is, I enjoy this, not only for my guys, just for people in general. I love people, yeah. right? I love people, right? That are willing to suffer for something and sacrifice. Because, right, the greatest of all time, in my opinion, was Jesus. And he Absolutely. suffered He suffered to no end for what he believed, right? He believed in mankind. So suffering is just something that I've gotten older. And I didn't always feel this way, right? I wasn't running around, you know, as a 10-year-old. You know, let me see how much I can suffer. But now, uh, you know, nor did I correlate suffering to success, you know, when I was in college. It was just, you know, sacrifice. And you do what you got to do to be, to, to, you know, to be a leader of what you're doing. But as you get older, you start to look into it more. Really, it is this, 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 this suffering. So I'm excited about my team. Uh, you know, Malik Heinzelman has improved. I mean, up and down the lineup. You know, everyone's excited about Echemendia. Uh, I'm excited about one of his opponents in the room, Dylan D'Amelio, who, who, who leads a really clean life, right? I'm, I'm excited to see the jump that Decatur made. Uh, you know, Tate, Tate Orndorff is going to challenge one of the most beloved Buckeyes I've ever coached, and that's Gas Tank Gary. I mean, Gas Tank Gary is an incredible, <laughs> an incredible story. Tate Orndorff, you know, left uh, you know, Utah Valley State. It was some people he really cared about to come to Ohio State and challenge, you know, Gary. Um, looking at, you know, Chase Singletary, a Florida boy right down there in Florida that went, you know, transferred, went to Blair Academy. You know, Chase Singletary is going to be interesting. Uh, you know, Steiner, Jordan, Caleb Romero had, was wrestling really well, had the Nationals taken from him. You know, Elijah Cleary, you know, walked away from wrestling at Ohio State, realized that the hard way is the way. I'm so proud of him and turned direction and came back to Ohio State. So Elijah's a great story, you know, made into our starting lineup last year uh, and, and had a really good year. Great. Uh, made kid. it to the great kid, you know, great. So made it to the national tournament. Uh, you know, Sammy Sasso you know, is an exciting wrestler. You know, I thought he was going to win it. You know, someone said that you know, who do you think is going to win 149? I really believe as a freshman, he was going to be the champ. I was now, excited to see him and our Florida boy go at it again, Pat Lugo. They went at it a few times during the season. I was excited yeah. to see them meet yeah. again. No, they're tough. They're, no doubt. They're tough guys. And then, and then uh, you know, obviously Ethan Smith, and we've got this really good young guy named Carson Karchlova, 
that's stepping or trying to fight his way into the lineup. He was a top recruit in the country. So, I mean, we have a great team. They're a lot of fun to be with. And, you know, I'm looking forward, like I said, to see uh, what they're made of. That's awesome. Yeah. Elijah Cleary, uh, his brother, Travis, worked with, with my son a lot last summer. And I got to meet him personally. And my son got to be around him. And um, what a great family. And, uh, yeah, he's, he was, he's, always he's loved. Friends. Elijah, you're talking about Elijah, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, he's loved. I mean, he's very funny. I mean, he can dance. He's got some dry humor. <laughs> you know, he'll throw he'll throw a one liner at you. You know, yeah. so so he's really he's really liked by the team. I think I, when I saw him come in the room, Mike would still try to roll with him, but I think he's at another level now. <laughs> yeah, well, I'd say his defense, his hips are so good. I mean, he's he's not easy guy to finish on. He and Sammy are fun to watch because Sammy likes to go to the legs a lot. And uh, you know, Elijah is tricky when you get on his legs, so they've helped each other. Yeah, I asked Nate a little bit about him because Nate got to work a little bit with him uh, at some point somewhere this summer. I, I know I was talking to him, and, and, uh, and that's what they were working on, stuff like that. So just, you know, being a little more offensive. They said he's really good defensively, but Nate said we're just working with him to, to get a little more spark yeah. to, to get forward. But that's cool. Um, yeah, that Echeman Diaz story was great. I know you mentioned him. I, I had him on. Um, just the, the story that he has to get to where he is now is, is incredible. And then what a great story, meeting him through gymnastics or however it was. And uh, yeah, what a, what a good kid. I, I'm glad I got to talk to him. And I grew up in South Florida. I live in Orlando now, but I know a lot of people with that same, the story of getting to America and, and finding a better way. And um, you know, God bless. He's him. very grateful. You know, where he was, it wasn't free. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't free, and we are, and we are free. And uh, he's definitely someone to uh, that's uh, we're excited about. You know, I'm excited, and he's got some. You know, the college style, the college, um, the college season is something that he hasn't experienced. He did experience a high school season, you know, which is similar. Of course, he was really not challenged because of the level that he's at. Right. But, uh, you know, we're really we're really excited about him. And he brings an element, you know, that you pointed out to a team where it's like, you know, he's just happy to have a pair of new wrestling shoes, you know, <laughs> and right. And you walk you walk through the locker room and most guys have five or six new pairs of wrestling shoes. Right. You know, or three or four pairs. And it's like, wow, maybe I'm I'm taking some simple things for granted that, man, this dude isn't so. Yeah, we have a nice culture in the room right now. You got a, you got a, you got a, a transfer who's 25 in Tate Orndorf. You got a guy like Gary Traub that was a walk-on 182-pounder, you know, and wins, you know, he, he wins in state college to make it five matches to five against Penn State last year in front of 16,000. He gets a late takedown and rides out Neville's, you know, in front of 16,000, you know, fans. And, and he's a, he's a, he's a walk-on at Ohio State. And, and he just, he didn't care. He didn't view himself as a walk-on. He viewed himself as a man that wanted to improve and, and again, carry that burden of being great at wrestling. So, you know, it's got a lot of, a lot of, a lot of fun things for us right now at Ohio State. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I, I would say if someone's having a bad day, go go ask uh, Etch about walking through the jungle late at night. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when you're, when you're recruiting for Ohio State, um, what is it, Coach Ryan, that you look for in a kid? I know – um, and how does, on the other side of that, how does a kid get looked at by an Ohio State or a Tom Ryan? Yeah. You know what? We want people that one think about this, right? That have a framework. They set their mindset right in the framework that, that is needed to succeed in a very competitive world. Uh, and that's the mindset is, you know, what, what would I be looking for? Right. If I was running an organization, let's say I'm a junior or senior in high school, I want that person's thought process to be if I was running an organization, what type of people would I want in it? Right. Because we all know what we don't like. And, 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 and that should be a barometer, a baseline of, of exactly wanting to be, to be the opposite of that. Right. I, I see people doing A, B, and C. I don't like that. I want to be the opposite of that. Right. So, so the first thing is for people to be very self-aware and self-conscious of, of, of the things that 
they absolutely don't value. So they can value the opposite. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, some th things like this, right? Obviously what we want people that have great emotional control, right? And emotional control is shown, you know, not only on the wrestling mat, but on Twitter, on Instagram, right? Emotional con control is shown, you know, from a, from a, from a, a school standpoint, a great standpoint, but emotional control is really important. Uh, we want people to take initiative, right? Now initiative can be simply, you know, uh, going out of your way to help your mother put the dishes away at the dinner table, right? It could be initiative, could be uh, taking a shot more often than you have been doing, right? Aggression develops far greater than passivity, right? If I, if I stay in my room and I don't ask questions and I don't put myself in a position to fail, my chance of improving diminishes greatly. I, I, so we want risk takers. Um, I, you know, we like you know, aggression, risk takers in, a, in an intelligent way, emotional control, you know, high wrestling IQ. We want people that, that model after winners. So who do you, who do you look up to, right? Who do, you, who do you aspire to wrestle like? Like if you don't know who you want to wrestle like, then, you know, what are you, what are you watching? So, I mean, things like that. You know, obviously guys that, that, that put up a lot of points that are good students, that are good citizens. I mean, you know, it's not rocket science, but the challenge is that the world is really tempting. Yeah, and uh, isn't there a challenge? Um, I, I've talked to Mike at times, and, and he says that the biggest challenge for, for college coaches is keeping the athlete, the athlete for the four years and getting that, that whole freshman class to the senior year as wrestlers and graduated them all um, is, is uh, that's obviously a goal when you're recruiting them. Uh. Absolutely. I mean, you know, this is as, you know, this is about the human side, right? There's a, there's a human component, but there's also a business component, right? Tom Ryan does not continue to, to um, have a career. <clears throat> if he brings people, people in and every year they leave, right? <laughs> I invest in them, right? I invest in them. I pour into them two times a week in the morning for 45 minutes. We teach them technique. They become, they grow, they become competitive and they leave because they don't have the habits and the disciplines needed to stay in school or to stay out of trouble, right? I mean, that's a formula for a disaster for any organization. So we're looking for people that are reliable, right? Absolutely. That are accountable, you know? So, so those are just some things that, you know, that, that you know, we look for when we're recruiting. Yeah, and of course, keep their mind in the books, keep their mind in the class, you know, get on track there, which I'm sure you're there for them on that side as well. Um, man, that's great, Ohio State. I, I've been able to visit Columbus uh, twice when I worked for BMW because they have their financial services up there. And I was just in there like overnight, got something to eat and left, but it seems like a cool little town. And uh, uh, I got to see the horseshoe from afar, but not inside. Yeah. It. Well, next time you come, look me up and I'll get you a tour of the horseshoe and the football complex. And, you know, we built the $10 million wrestling complex, which is out of this world. It's the best in the world right now. I know, I know we'll get chased down, but, uh, you know, right now it's, it's a spectacular place to train, you know, and it speaks to the, the passion and love that, uh, did I lose you? Yeah. Uh, that people have for the sport here. Come in now. Yeah. I'd love to, I'd love to, um, get up there, bring my son up there for a watch a wrestling uh watch a wrestling match i looked last year to try to go to state college and you were going there but um i don't know what was more expensive the tickets to fly into state college at the time or the ticket for the match <laughs> i didn't know <laughs> it was that's crazy. a good sign that's a good yeah. sign for wrestling i'm sorry that you experienced that but yeah, I, I thought right, i was yeah. going to an ohio state penn state football game i was like damn right. this is a big deal <laughs> uh, they were pricey well uh, uh so you know, you have a you have a book out. I, I don't know how long it's been out, but I saw it, that it's out now. It's called Chosen Suffering. Um, you know, what was the purpose behind writing that book? And um, how can we get a hold of that book? How can we buy a book? Uh, talk a little bit about yeah. that. Well, the book's on Amazon. It's also on chosensuffering.com. So chosensuffering.com is a website that you can order the book. You can also get it on Amazon. It was really... Uh, it's really like all of us, like you, like the people you've had on. It's just, it was just my kind of my journey, 
right? My journey through this life, the people I've met, the lessons I've learned. And it was really, you know, the main, the main, the main, you know, the, 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 the impetus behind it was Teague, right? And most significant human being I've ever run across. And that was my five-year-old son that we lost on February 16th of 2004. And it's really the deepest pain uh, that I felt in my life, far beyond my team taking second five times at the Nationals, right? Or a student athlete that I love falling short in the blood round, you know, or me losing in the national finals, right? Those are all things that were very difficult, but there's difficult and then there's tragic and there's a, and there's a fine line between the two. And this was tragic. And, and I know that, uh, you know, most people on earth, if you live long enough, are going to experience something that's tragic. And that was really the, the fundamental reason, you know, why I wrote the book and how it's transformed me and moved me from, from a place that I was, I was pretty much in the light and then I was in extreme darkness and then I came back and now it's never been, uh, I've never experienced more light, uh, despite the fact that I carry the burden of someone who lost a child and you know, the more I live, the more I realize that there are many that carry burdens uh, like mine and they move on and they progress and they make a difference. So that's pretty much uh, why I wrote the book called Chosen Suffering. And I've broken suffering down into two types. There's chosen, the type that we, ch that we choose. And then there's unchosen. The type that we choose is the type that led me to leave a full scholarship at Syracuse University to walk on at the University of Iowa and get beat unmercifully for quite a while until my reflexes, my strength, my timing, my nutrition, my cardiovascular system, my technique was strong enough to battle people that were simply just taking on the burden of being their best. And then there's, then there's unchosen suffering, which is the loss of a child. Um, the loss of a loved one, the loss of a parent, the, the financial struggles, COVID ruining a business that someone worked hard to build for 20 years, 30 years. So, so and those are unchosen sufferings that, that uh, we all face. And that's pretty much what the book is about, the chosen things I've learned and the unchosen things I've learned. Wow. Uh, there, there had to be a lot of emotion writing that book. And Obviously, condolences, I know, were, were many years uh, from that moment, but I'm sure it's with you always. I'm sure he's with you always. And uh, yeah, my, my dad always told me, your kids are supposed to bury you. You're not supposed to bury your kids. So when any anytime that happens to anyone, uh, nobody can really say, I know what you're feeling because you don't. It's like you just say my condolences. And, uh, but yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, and it's great to, to see that you were able to put it out there and, and you know, being a coach and being a great mentor. And obviously I'm seeing being a, an aisle to, to a lot of people. I mean, another guy, the man, the myth, the legend from Trevor Elliott, uh, Andy Bricker. Tom is one of the best. It was an honor to watch him coach back in the CAA and see all of his success since. So uh, I think- when Yeah, people, Coach Bricker. Hello, <laughs> Coach Bricker. And Trevor Elliott was my boy at Indiana. He was a three-time state champion down in Illinois. He was the cradle master. I know he had a tough injury and he came back from it. Uh, and even in coaching, I wish his, I wish, I told him, he came to camp last summer with some of his boys. And I told these guys, I'm like, listen, this guy was an animal. He would have cradled every one of you guys and stuck you. Because, you know, these kids these days, they love their coaches, but they're like, ah, you know, you there? Sorry. Yeah, I'm here. No yeah. worries. They're like, ah, you know, he's just an old man over the hill. Listen, we were all studs at one point. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm here to attest that Trevor Elliott was a stud. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, well, like I said, I mean, you know, to a lot of people, they look up there like, like you're Superman, right? But then when they see, well, Superman can hurt and get through suffering, so can I. And that moves them to be able to do things. So uh, it's good that you were able to put that out for kids. Now, you have a huge relationship very tight knit with coach Dan Gable. Uh, you wrestled for him. I know you guys, I think you were the only other person he allowed to use his training system or whatever. <laughs> it was and, uh, but talk about what, you know, your relationship with Dan, uh, what he's meant to you and, and, and kind of how it's grown to what it is today. 
you know, well, one, he welcomed me, right? I mean, he didn't, he didn't call me in high school to offer me a scholarship, but I've never held that against him. <laughs> but I jokingly later, you know, would sit in his office and say, coach, how about I go back to my place and you just call me and tell me that you want me to come wrestle for you at the <laughs> University of Iowa? Because I really liked, you know, I, you know that's a place that, uh, you know, I wanted to, to wrestle. And, uh, you know, I never, I never got the call. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. So, uh, you know, I think the, the, you know, the greatest thing about Coach Gable um, was that his deep sufferings, his deep pain, the things that he, he put himself under duress constantly. He went through some really challenging things um, as a brother, right, uh, as a son, right, with his sister being, being, being murdered the way she was and him having to live through that. Uh, and all of these things made him uniquely him and a tremendous leader. Uh, he was um, someone that through those sufferings taught me so many things and it helped me transform not only my wrestling, but my life and my ability to lead people. So, uh, you know, I call him, I text him, I tell him I love him, uh, you know, and uh, I'm really grateful for Coach Gable and, and, uh, and how he helped me. Yeah, and I mean, uh, to have a mentor like that, I'm sure he was right there through your chosen, through your sufferings and everything. And uh, I'm sure that was a big way to get through it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, to have a, to have a guy like that, has he, has he given you the phone call yet and offered you to come wrestle at Iowa? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 he, he never did. He never did. <laughs> but, uh, but he treated me so fairly, right? There were really good guys in the room around my weight. You know, there was an all American. I have a ton of respect for Doug Stryker. That was a, a sophomore all American at 150. I had the Steiner brothers and travel and just a lot of guys that were passionate at the time about the sport. And he never, he never viewed me as a walk-on, right? And maybe partially that's because I never viewed myself as a walk-on, right? Nice. I never viewed myself as being someone below anybody else because maybe someone was on scholarship and I wasn't. I viewed myself as someone that, that would be valued by the workload that I put into what I was doing. And my work would, would speak rather than my mouth. And, and, there's a, and there's a big difference between the two. And I think ultimately, you know, I earn the respect of, of, of people like the Steiners and the Brands Brothers who I live with and a team of people that, you know, in a culture that was governed by work and not words. So, uh, and, Gable, and Gable was, you know, was, was there to lead us the whole way through. And, and, you know, I have a saying and it's not a saying, it's just a, it's just a truth. It's a, it's a factual truth that, that uh, you know, trust precedes progress. You know, and and my trust in Gable was so deep, was so deep that what he said was was law, right? It was proven law, and uh, so my progress was so incredibly fast there. You know, to go from you know getting beat up and being I thought I was really fit, but getting beat up and someone who thought he was fit, you know, to ninety days later, you know, starting to beat up the people that were beating me up. Uh, it was really because of the trust factor and the belief um, that I had in him. So it was a great place to wrestle, and it, it, and it still is, and it's a place that we love to compete against because they bring out the best in you, and the Brands brothers are, are good friends, and, and I know what they're made of, and, and knowing what they're made of helps me, right? You, know, you go to bed at night, like, listen, this is what these guys are made of. Either, you're made, either you make yourself of that, or you're going to be the, the nail getting hit by the hammer. And, uh, you know, we're, we're happy that, you know, we fared well against them and, uh, we, we, we continue to look forward to the many battles ahead. That's awesome. Now, uh, you were part of the national championship winning team as an athlete at Iowa, and then you were part of the national champion or the, the leader of the, the 2015 team in Ohio state, um, What's more gratifying as an athlete or as a coach? So as the, you know, what do I say? The experience or, or, or actually orchestrating it? Yeah, I, I mean, they were both glorious, right? We won, I think we won in 90, 91 and 91-92. So I was a starter on the team when, when the University of Iowa won two national titles. Uh, I was second and third. And I would say that it, it was glorious, right? It was, it was, it was incredibly a part to be a part of a team that, Listen, I took wearing the singlet very serious, right? 
you know, I took my role as a member of the team, you know, it was, it was a tradition rich program and I wanted to do my part to keep it that way. Um, but I would, I would say that I would say in, in all, in all, with all humility and all uh, that being part of coaching a team that won it. And maybe it's just because I'm older, right. And, and, and that, and that recollection of, of being the part of the team that won it 20 years ago has, has not faded, but, but, is less in the forefront of my experience and my feelings. Leading the team to a title was incredibly emotional for me. Now it might be that, you know, selfishly, I didn't win it myself and I, I, I was in a position to win it and I didn't. So maybe the fact that, you know, I didn't win it and my team won it, 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 it dampened it slightly. Right? And that's just being real about it, right? I mean, I love that my team won it, right? my team had won it, but I didn't win it. And I was battling those emotions then as a selfish man, you know, would. <laughs> um, now, and then, you know, when we won it in 15, it was emotional on many levels, you know, most importantly, because the alumni that had supported us and, 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 and an administration and a team of guys and all the people before us that came and didn't have the support that we did. Um, and then there was just the loss of my son that, that it, 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 it resurfaced in me, right? It was a moment in time when we're holding the trophy high in the air and I'm, and I'm flooded with the emotions of him and how I wish, you know, that he was with me on this day because my family was all beside me. So I think the emotions of it all, uh, you know, I would give slight advantage to coaching the team. I think I hear that from... Um... From a lot of coaches, women, men, high school, middle school, college, I, I asked them, do they prefer the experience or the observation? And I bet you most, if not all, say the observation. They say leading young men and young women and then watching them succeed is a feeling that they can never replace. They say it's just, mo that's, that's the feedback I get. And world champions, Olympic champions, high school, middle school champions, whatever they might be, but you ask them about the observation role and and watching a kid that you've put your effort in go out and accomplish their goals, they just say it's so much greater. So it is a powerful thing. It is a powerful thing. It's a very uplifting thing, and it releases sustained uh, cortisol in your system, <laughs> right? Uh, so yeah, it was, it was a great moment and we're looking forward to winning more. You know, we've been second too many times, right? So it's, it's, and we've been up against this tough Penn state team and Iowa team and, and a bunch of others that are really good. So, uh, but you know, our, our, as, as hungry as we are for them, our entire worth is not piled on this, right? We're more yeah. than, we're more than champions. We're more than, we're more than runner ups in this life. Absolutely. Well, you can see the kids and, and the students and the athletes that come out of your program and, and go on to be amazing humans. So we spoke about a couple of them before we came on and that's awesome. Hey coach, before we get into the 10 questions, man, thanks so much for coming on. I mean, just for you to say yes to me and, and for me to have you on it. I told you earlier, I was never more nervous. I was like, Oh man, I got coach Ryan coming on. This is amazing <laughs> to me. So, um, uh, Thank you so you should have called my kids, man. You should have called my kids before, you know, <laughs> you, you, they would have, they would have, you know, released plenty of those nerves. What? My dad? What he, what's wrong with you, man? That's <laughs> a goofball. <laughs> uh, me too. So I don't think if right, I told right. my kids or my wife that I was right. nervous, they'd be like, come on, you can come talk on, to man. anybody. I'm like, right. oh, and you're good at it. It's Tom Ryan. <laughs> like, you're good at it, man. Well, I appreciate it. I, I didn't have much practice. I just started it and it's getting better. So you're uh, a natural. <laughs> thanks, man. I, I, I pray one day I get to get up there and watch your team wrestle. Uh, but let's get into a little fun stuff. Ten questions. Okay. Are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. All right. B and K Smokehouse or Ray Ray's Hog Pit? What was that? <laughs> B and K Smokehouse or Ray Ray's Hog Pit? Man, I don't know. I don't know. Let's go with number one. All right. I just looked at your school and, and found places around it. So <laughs> hopefully some of them you know. <laughs> uh, peanut butter. How about this one? Is peanut butter and jelly an option or no? You know, I almost did. I almost did grilled cheese or grilled peanut right. butter and jelly. Have you wow, tried it? That's a good question. 
Have you tried it grilled yet? The PB and J? Oh, yeah. oh, oh my yeah. God. Yes. I'll go grilled PB and J on that one. <laughs> I like it. Uh, the Columbus Zoo or the Columbus Aquarium? Columbus Zoo. <clears throat> the, what do I have? The, the thaw, the, the Thawman or Ash and M? Don't know either one. All right. They're burger <laughs> places, apparently. I don't know. Oh, okay. Uh, Museum of Art or Center of Science and Industry? Museum of Art. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you don't know these either. Uh, yeah. Uh, maybe you'll surprise me. Los Guachos or El Ranchito? <laughs> <laughs> I like tacos. I like tacos, <laughs> me too. <laughs> The Motorcycle Hall of Fame or the Auto Museum? Mm, auto Museum. They seem cool. I was looking them up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would definitely do those two. Those, those look cool. All right. I don't know. Mikey's I don't get out much, and man. Listen. <laughs> man, I don't get out much. This is challenging. Right. For me. Mikey's or Andriotico's? Or oh. Andriotico. Yeah, Andriotico. Yeah, I'll go Andriotico's. Yeah, I got okay, Andriotico's. As a coach, okay. I know you knew pizza because that's pizza's the Pizza's my favorite. Yeah, way to a kid's heart. Just order pizzas. <laughs> well, I'm from New York. I'm from Long Island, man. New York pizza, there's nothing like it. Oh, for sure. Uh, North Market or the Italian Village? Oh, wow. Man, uh, Italian Village. Both are <laughs> fantastic. Uh, Rodizio's or Jay Gilbert's wood fired steak? Yeah, I'll go Jay Gilbert's. Ah, we know those. Uh, Steaks, I know. Yeah. That's where you take brands when they come in, right? Yeah, Jeff Ruby's. Jeff Ruby. Uh, the Horseshoe or Cavelli Center? Cavelli, baby. But right now, the Horseshoe, all I care about right now is Ohio State football. Ohio yeah, State I, football. Let's I, go. Big Ten football. I did, I did I read something correctly this morning? I hope it wasn't fake news. I saw where the Big Ten is changing course. I believe I believe that's going to happen. Yeah, I believe it's going to happen. And, and I do want to mention Cavelli Arena is insane. Competing in there has been an incredible blessing and has far outseated, exceeded what we thought it was going to be like as a competitor in Cavelli. So it's been fun. But right now, we need that horseshoe to be rocking. That's awesome. Yeah, and, and it's good to see that by, by other sport starting to happen, maybe the Big Ten and is it the Pac-12 is, is taking a step back and saying, you know what, maybe this can work. So yeah, well, let's, let's hope that happens. As we see more sport and as we see that it can be done on safe platforms, I think it'll give confidence to people to do it more and we can get a little bit, maybe back to some normalcy. Absolutely. Well, thank you, coach. Uh, you know, <clears throat> doing what you do up there at Ohio State and it was an absolute honor to have you on and uh, I can't wait to one day meet you in person and say thank you. Great to be with you today. Yes, Appreciate sir. it. You have a great Bye, day. Buddy. All right, take care.